It could be very serious. It could change the whole complexion of an election. Two election supervisors take action tonight after an NBC2 investigation uncovers flawed record keeping and human error allowing people who are not citizens of the United States to vote. NBC2 investigator Andy Parati has been working on this story now for more than two months. He joins us live from the Lee County Election Center. Andy? Well, Lynn Lindsay, we don't know how widespread this problem is because elections offices don't keep track of where non-citizens live. So we decided to do something that they never tried to do before, and we found them on our own. Have you voted before? Right. I vote every year. Hinako Danette is not a U.S. citizen, yet the Cape Coral resident is registered to vote. Do you know that you're not supposed to vote if you're not a U.S. citizen? NBC2 found Danette after reviewing her jury excusal form. She told the clerk of court she couldn't serve because she wasn't a U.S. citizen. But we found her name and nearly 100 others like her in the database of Florida registered voters. You have no idea why you're registered to vote. I have no idea. I mean, how am I supposed to know? Go through the go driver's license facilities or anything. I don't know. This Naples woman didn't want to show her face. While she doesn't know how she was registered, she does know how to vote. Records show she voted six times in elections dating back 11 years. I know you cannot vote before you become a citizen, so I never tried to do anything like that. Samuel Lincoln is not a U.S. citizen either. The Jamaican national says he doesn't know how he ended up registered to vote. So this is all a big mistake. Hmm. So it, that's their mistake. That's not mine. But we obtained a copy of his 2007 voter registration application. It's clearly marked U.S. citizen. And that is under oath, uh, that document. They're attesting that it is, in fact, true. And by falsifying it, it's a third degree felony. County supervisors of elections tell me they have no way to verify citizenship. Under the 1992 Motor Voter Law, they're not required to ask for proof. We have no policing authority. We don't have any way of bouncing that information off of any other database that would give us that information. Does that need to change? Um, I think it needs to be looked at. Until that happens, the only way supervisors of elections can investigate voter fraud is the if they get a tip. It looks like these individuals lied on your documents. So that's what our list became. After showing them nearly 100 names we compiled, both elections offices sent letters to each voter asking them to verify citizenship. It could be very serious. It could change the whole complexion of an election. It's important to note that we don't know whether they were here legally or not, only that they're not U.S. citizens. It takes 30 days. They have 30 days to respond to those letters, to verify their citizenship. If they don't, they'll be taken off the voter rolls. Back to you. Andy, quick question for you. We know in Florida all too well that it can only take one vote, and that can make a difference. But are the supervisors changing their policies to make sure that the people who are not allowed to vote, that they don't vote? Based on our investigation, both elections offices plan to request jury excusal forms from clerk of courts every single time they get one that says not U.S. citizen. They'll basically do what we did. They'll take those names and they'll compare those names with people registered to vote in Florida. Live in Fort Myers, Andy Parati, NBC2.